I just wanted to give you some examples here. Now, this is what I call the BAME chessboard of power. And all of these individuals from around the world, you know, there are hundreds of them, but these are some of the ones which I've narrowed it down to, which have built resilience, motivation in pupils, whereby the schooling system at the time wanted to fail them. So if you look at the top one here, Sadie Silver, for instance, teenage mother, Okay, so she was a teenage mother. She went into education later on in life, and then she became the principal of a school in New York City. And what she was concerned about was the lack of facilities given to her students. So for example, she started to make partners with educational psychologists, with, you know, with therapists to deal with the emotional issues of her students within school. This is what she did as a leader when she went into school. I think the school is called PS, PS28. What else did she do? She had a, she, so she had a relationship with the YMCA because over a third of the children live in homeless shelters. And those homeless shelters do not open up until around about seven o'clock in the evening. And the school finishes at three o'clock. And she did not want her students to be hanging out on the street where they were approached by gang culture, different types of violence. So this is the initiative that she brought into the school. This was part of her health and well-being program. Those who were men who were emotionally disturbed, et cetera, she made sure that those practitioners came into the school to assist and to train and to help teachers as well. This is what leadership was about for her. Then you've got the likes of Ruvin Forenstein, who's Jewish. He actually dealt with children who were traumatized after the Holocaust. OK, and I feel this is important here. So even though he was a teacher, he was also a psychologist and he came up with this theoretical concept called structural cognitive modifiability. And this is a way of educating traumatized children in a way which is effective. This man ended up creating a, a method in order to train and to teach children who had Down syndrome. OK, and his daughter and his granddaughter who had Down syndrome. Down syndrome ended up gaining an honors degree from a university. So it doesn't matter the type of disabilities or the challenges that we have, there's always some kind of solution. You've got the likes of Jaime Escalante, who's from Bolivia. He was an engineer. He came into America as an example. And then what started happening, he had to do his degree again. He had to do his qualification in English. He decided he wanted to teach. Yeah, to Latino and Hispanic students, um, advanced calculus. The school wouldn't support him because they had low expectation in the pupils. They basically said that these pupils are the children of janitors and cleaners, you know, people who work on the production line who are unemployed. Why give them that? Escalante decided to um, introduce advanced calculus. And from this school, okay, they decided to enter the exam. Then they exam entered the exams and the board noticed that these remedial students from his school, they all passed. They claimed that they must have cheated. They had to sit the exam again, okay, on advanced calculus. They took it the second time and over 98% of them had a higher math than they did the first time. So what happened? They made a film uh, on Amy Escalante. I think it's called um, Stand and Deliver. I think that's what it's called. So what happened? All these education, all these educators from universities wanted to go into the class of Escalante to find out these emotionally disturbed students who were from gang-ridden, gang gang-ridden uh, communities. How did he get them, you know, from these remedial classes to deal with, you know, advanced calculus? And what they found out, he, he had nothing special. It was a relationship he built with these children. He was telling them that you see those pyramids in South America, you are the descendant of those people, okay? Giving them heritage, giving them their identity. And this is what it's about. So we have to look at the likes of Tommy Lindsay, a forensic coach, you know, who basically ended up winning six times uh, national championships in forensics you know, within America. There was a documentary which was done on him, Tommy Lindsay, where he dealt with remedial students, those who were emotionally disturbed, et cetera, and made them six-time national champions. So we can reach, what I'm trying to show you here, there are people who can reach the unreachable, you know, which is usually termed within the educational system, all children are reachable. 
And I, these are just some examples. And the last one I'm gonna finish off is the Japanese um, uh, musicologist, Suzuki. Suzuki was known to be one of the main violin players in the world. And what he decided he wanted to do, he wanted to ensure that he wanted to work with those pupils or students who were socially disadvantaged. He didn't want to work with the gifted and talented students. So what I'm showing you here, these are just some, I can go through all of them, but these are just some of uh, some of the great educators who were able to reach pupils. And one of the main things, they just weren't thinking of cognitive development. They were thinking of the emotional as well as the psychological development as well on self-perception. And this is what is important here. So we have templates where we can develop. 